I give all glory and honor to my Father God who lives in heaven. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I acknowledge the Holy Spirit who strengthens, guides, protects, and inspires me each and every day. Good afternoon, everyone. During the week, the Lord led me to 1 John. 1 John is one of three books named after the Apostle John. The Gospel according to John is not named after John. It's the Gospel according to what John saw. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which is the last book in the Bible written by John, is not named after John. There's only three books named after John. The interesting thing about the first book, known as 1 John, it's not addressed to anyone in particular. When you go and you look at all of the other 21 letters in the Bible, they're addressed to someone. Or they're addressed to a region like Galatians and Corinth and Ephesus. But this book is not addressed to anyone, but I want you to know that it is for you and I. It's known as a general epistle, and its purpose is to show us the way that leads to God and show us how to get there. First John begins with a testimony. It reads as follows. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. He's talking about Jesus. There's so many people that say that they're apostles, but the apostles of old had Jesus in their life. They saw Jesus, they knew Jesus, they learned from Jesus, they witnessed his death, they witnessed his resurrection, and they witnessed the ascension into heaven. And this Apostle John is giving you a first testimony of what he has experienced. You and I, when we go out and we witness and we profess the goodness of God, we are sharing how God has impacted our lives and what we have seen him do in the lives of others. But we don't know Jesus like that. We know Jesus from reading the word. John chapter 17, not first John, but John chapter 17, where Jesus Christ prayed. He prayed for the believers who would not see him live and up close, but who would come to understand and receive him by faith. But the Apostle John is one of the last first hand witnesses at the time that he wrote this. All of the other apostles have been laid to rest. They have been persecuted. They are no more. John stands as last. And everyone is looking at John because he's the last of a select few. Yes. And so he begins his testimony of this is what I have seen. He says in verse 2, the life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and manif was manifested to us. Again, he's talking about Jesus who is the light of the world. He's talking about Jesus who is the reason that everyone has life as you find in the book of John chapter 1, the first few verses. He says he came into the world and he was the light of men, but unfortunately, the light was not known by those who was made by the light. Mm -hmm. 
And John is giving his testimony because he has a great love for God. He's not doing it because he has to do it, which he was commanded to do, but he is doing it because he has a love of God. I want you to think about your life and think about the good works that you do. Are you doing them because you were commanded to do it or are you doing it because you love God? John loves God. He's not doing it out of fear. Are you doing what you are doing, the good works that you are doing? Are you doing them because you fear God? Because I want you to know if you are still living in a state of fearing God, then you have not come as far as God wants you to come along. That fear was just to get you to understand the power of God and how he has control over your life and that you should fear him and more than you fear men. Amen. It was meant to get you to understand who God is. But God, through his word and through his saints, he wants you to grow in love for him. Love is what gets you into heaven, not the fear of God. The fear of God may make you do certain things, but it is the love of God that makes you do all things for God and for your brothers and sisters. Yes. He goes on to say in verse three, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son, Jesus Christ, and these things we write to you that your joy may be full. It's a testimony. He's telling you the reasons why he's doing this. Christians want people to be friends with them so that they can be beloved or respected or they could say they have a lot of people who love them. But that is not what John is saying. John is saying, I love God and I am sharing this good news with you. Not so that you be aligned to me, not so that you'll be loyal to me, not so that you will love me and have fellowship with me, but so you will have fellowship with God. I want you to understand that all of us are transparent and we should be pass throughs. Everything and everyone who shows us love, it should not end with us. It should make its way through us and go to God. Yeah. When you do something or people, you're helping them or what have you, it is not for your glory. The glory is supposed to pass through you and you're supposed to give it to God. So John is saying this is not so you and I could be friends. We don't need to be BFFs. I want you to be BFF with God. The message today is based not on his testimony. It's based on 1 John chapter 1 verses 5 through 7, which comes after his testimony, after his sharing, after his statement of purpose. It says... This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you. That God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. I don't know if you caught this. Let's work our way backwards. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Church, hint, hint, clue, clue. 
There is no fellowship in the church unless you fellowship in with God first. Amen. There is no fellowship in the church. There is no being on one accord in the church unless you as an individual are walking in the light with God first. Let's not put the cart before the horse. In all ways, God comes first. Everything else comes after God. Love with your brother and your sister, love with the people that God created in the world comes after the love you have with God. Everything you want while you are on the face of this earth, it comes after you have a relationship and are walking in light with God first. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. Wait a minute. I thought that the blood of Jesus Christ just cleanses us, period. But focus, it says, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin, if you are walking in the light as God. Mm. Soap, when you get in the shower, it doesn't work unless you got water. Unless you have water, that soap stays hard and it cleans nothing away. But the moment that you add water to the soap, the soap and the water mix and it begins to break down that dirt that's on you and you look down in the bottom of the tub and the water, oh my goodness, the water went for all of those who thought they was clean and didn't need a shower. When you look down in the bottom of the tub, you see dirty water washing off of you. God wants you to know the blood of Jesus works when you have the water, which is the Holy Spirit. Oh, my goodness. You need the Holy Spirit and the blood. Oh, my goodness. Mm, mm, mm. To wash you as white as snow. You can't just have the blood and be doing dirty in the world and think you're going to get out of that shower squeaky clean. God wants you to know the Holy Spirit has to be in you, working in you, directing you and guiding you and protecting you. And then when combined with the blood, the mistakes that you make after you confess that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior will wash you clean. Let's keep going backwards. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. For everybody who's doing good works and saying that they are a believer in Christ and you reading your Bible and you pray every now and then and you part of a ministry and your fruit is acceptable to man, God wants you to know that there was a young boy who had a brother and he had an offering as well. And he thought his offering was going to be acceptable to God. It seemed good. It tasted good. It walked good. But that gift was not accepted by God. And he went and he slew his brother because he was angry. God wants you to know there's a whole lot of people doing mighty good works, but because their heart is not seeking and panting after God, God appreciates your good works, but he doesn't appreciate you. And he is giving you an opportunity to come to understand 
that if you dabbing in the world and dabbing in God's kingdom at the same time, you are not acceptable to God. I don't care what somebody's telling you. I don't care what preacher's saying. That's okay. God knows you're not perfect. Well, I want you to know and be crystal clear. You cannot dabble in the world and dabble in the kingdom of God at the same time and expect God to receive you unto himself. God don't work like that. Keeping working on backwards, God is light. And in order to, for you to be a part of God, you can't be dimming God's light. There are too many believers in Christ and you think you are doing good. You think you are doing good works. But God is saying to you, stop dimming my light. Jesus Christ struck Paul on the Damascus road because Paul was coming against Christ church. Jesus Christ in his word that we are reading today wants you to know that there are many of you who are dimming God's light. God brought you into this world as soul of the earth to magnify his light to bring him glory but many of us are acting in a way that we know we shouldn't be acting and we are dimming God's light and God said enough of this crap he's tired of it you know better do better while you still have time the subject today is beware of dark past Beware of dark paths. When you are on a dark path, you are dimming God's light. God placed his spirit in you to do mighty good works. Jesus Christ even said much greater works you will do because I go to live with my father. When you are not fulfilling your purpose in this life, when you are allowing yourself to be conned by people who just want to use you, be conned by people who want to take advantage of your gifts for their own gain. I want to remind you that our gifts were not given to us for anybody else's gains, but the gain of God's church. Stop letting people pimp you out. Stop letting people put you on the street. You are kings and queens, a royal holy nation unto God, a royal priesthood, and you are not to let anyone use you spitefully in that fashion. And more importantly, you are not to pursue any relationships or partnerships where you gain based on your spiritual gifts. Beware of the dark paths. The signpost that leads to the entrance of the dark path, not everybody sees it. But it's standing there as bright as day. And the sign says, there is no love here. Mm. On the dark path, there is no love. When you feel like you have no love for God because things are not working out in your life the way you want them to work out. Be careful because you are about to enter or you may already be on a dark path. Because when you don't have love for God who is light, that means you're not standing in the light because if you're standing in the light, you have love for God. So when you don't love God because of your situations, when you've given up 
on God because of what you see or what you feel. God wants you to know you may already be on a dark path. When you feel like you have no love for God's creation, God's animals, the trees, his other human beings, when you feel that way, be careful because you may already be on the dark path. And that the worst thing that anybody can go through is thinking you're in a good way when you're really in a bad way. And when you have no love for God and no love for his creation, you're showing God you are not part of his family. You are on the outside. What family do you know is family and they don't love each other? Jesus Christ said, this is how you will know you are my disciples. This is how they will know that you are disciples my disciples, you will love each other. Let me remind you, if you have no love for anything, then you have no love for God. You cannot say you have love for God and not have love for God's creation. No matter what they did to you, you got a key called forgiveness. That forgiveness frees you up to love. When you feel like you have no love for your brothers and sisters in the church, something is wrong. You cannot say you don't have love for your brothers and sisters in the church who are part of God's body and Christ is the head. Tell me that your heart is telling the rest of your muscles and every, all of your skin, oh, I'm not going to send blood to you because I don't love you. I'm not going to send blood to you in, which contains oxygen, therefore you're going to die. Tell me what heart does that. Tell me what stomach says I'm not going to digest the food and send nutrients in the small intestines and the large intestines. Say I'm not going to show you any love. I'm not going to break down the food and send you the nutrients that you need so that you can survive. Tell me what internal organ in the body that God made does not work for the good of the body in totality. If you don't love your brothers and sisters in Christ, something is wrong. When you feel like you have no love for yourself because of what you've been going through or what someone has told you or how people have hurt you, and shown you no love. And you begin to believe the lie and not love yourself. Don't you know that you were handcrafted by God? God took time to form you in your mother's womb. God took time when you didn't even know him to take care of you. God took time when you rejected him by being disobedient in your life. God still loved you. Your situations and what you're going through and what people are saying about you do not define who you are. God defined who you were before you even came to live and all you have to do is remember if no one loves you, God loves you. That should be enough to carry you through. Because last I looked, all of those who you are preoccupied who, that don't love you, they all are going to pass like grass. But only God is eternal. So who love should you really be seeking? Be careful. Because when you are doing these things, you're being lured onto the dark path. That's the only way the enemy can get you there. Because God created you as a child of light. 
He his son died for you and made you a child of light. Amen. The only way that a Christian, a believer can get on the dark path is through deception. And if you are seeking God in all ways, you will not be deceived. The Bible says that people were so much lovers of the world that God gave them to believe the big deception. Well, if you are pursuing God at all times in everything that you are doing, you cannot be deceived. When you are making decisions and not consulting God, don't you understand that when you consult God, the Bible says, in all thy ways acknowledge God and he will direct your path? Well, when God directs you, he's directing you onto the path of light. Amen. When you direct yourself and you are not in alignment with God, there's no way you can find the path of light. Only God leads you there. And for all of those who need proof, why don't you take a look at Psalm 119, verse 105, where the psalmists recognize that God left a map to the road, the path called life, when he said, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. There is no other way. There is no other word. There is no other person that leads you to Christ, that leads you to the path of light. It was revealed to Timothy that the map that leads to the road that's called the path of light is in two. Timothy. Verses 3, 16 and 17. That's 2 Timothy verses 3, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. It says, all Scripture. All Scripture. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. In the Greek, it says that it is God breathed. God breathed on men and they wrote what God wanted them to write. But in the English translation, it is inspired. But the scripture is God breathed into man and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. The, the word of God leads you to the path of light. The map that also leads you to the path of light, you can find it in John chapter 14, verse 6, for those who are writing it down. It says, and this is Christ himself speaking, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. You can't get to God. You can't get to heaven. You can't get to all eternity unless you go through Jesus Christ. He is the map that leads you to the path of light that leads to God. I want you to know the word tells us that we are not slaves of sin. People have gotten caught up into this belief that begins with I'm not perfect. That I'm flesh and in my very members is sin. I was shaping in iniquity. And all of the other verses that tells you the situation that occurred or existed before you accepted Christ. 
When you are a believer in Christ, you don't claim certain things in the Bible. They may have been applicable at a certain point in your life, but God expects you to grow past certain things so that certain things that convicted you and was true about you are no longer true. If you was convicted of a crime and you did your time, you don't get convicted again. It's over. When Christ set you free, John chapter 8 verse 36 tells you, therefore, if the son makes you free, then you shall be free indeed. There's no reason for any of you to commit sin. There is no reason for any of you and I who accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and we truly and sincerely believe He is the risen Lord who died for our sins and then we receive the Holy Spirit who seals us as God to the day of redemption None of us have a reason to sin. We've all been set free. The question is, what are you choosing to do with the freedom that God gave you? He done set us on the path called the way, the truth, and the life, which is the path of light. He took us out of darkness and brought us into his wonderful light. He took us from the dark paths and the dark places that we were operating in and he put us in a place of light. With all of that said, why are some of you on any given day turning around from that place of light and heading back into the prison that Christ freed you from. Love keeps you. Love provides for you. Love gives you the drive to do for God instead of for Satan. Oh, some of you are looking at me like you've gotten your feelings hurt. Some of you are looking at me like I'm going against with all the things that you have been taught. But God said in His Word, if you are sinning against God, then He is not your Father. You can't claim Him as Father of life. Jesus Christ, when he met the Pharisees and the Sadducees and they were going up against him and they didn't receive his word. He said, you can't receive my word because your father is the father of sin, which is Satan. See, I want you to know this is very serious. God woke us up this morning and it's a beautiful summer day. But the reality of it all is everyone's life is hanging in the balance. And your life is dependent on what path you're traveling on. And if you are traveling on the path of darkness, even though God loves you, at the end of the day, you will find yourself in darkness for all eternity. Is that what you really want to do? Is that how you want to spend your eternity. If you want to live with God and reap rewards that you didn't even sow, but are given to you out of the goodness of God and are part of your birthright, if you want more than what the world has to offer, which doesn't last always anyway, because it either morphs 
either come and eat it up or water causes things to rust or someone comes and steals it. All of this stuff is temporary. How are you going to invest yourself? Are you going to make investments and live in a manner that brings you short-term gains when you could have eternal gains for always? My brothers and sisters in Christ, stop choosing the path of darkness. No matter how innocent it might seem to you, People want to tell, separate lies. They say, oh, it was a little white lie. A lie is a lie is a lie. And if you lie, then the truth is not in you because God, not only is he light, he is truth. Beware of the dark path. Walk in the light always. Your very life depends on where you walk and with whom you walk. Don't be concerned with anybody else but yourself. Work out your own soul salvation. Everybody has to make a choice and they will be held accountable to the choices that they make. Your life depends on where you walk and with whom you walk. Psalm 119 says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep His testimonies, who seek Him with their whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in His ways. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. The Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God the Father keep you as you struggle to sin no more. It's not over. I want to call your attention to Jesus Christ who found himself in the company of men who brought to him a woman. And they said she was caught in adultery. We're not going to discuss why didn't they bring the man. The fact is they brought the woman who was caught. And they said to Christ, the law that Moses gave said she should be stoned. What say you? And Jesus Christ make believe or acted like he did not hear what they were saying. And they brought it to his attention again saying, hey, Moses said she should be stoned. And Jesus Christ rose up from his, from his kneeling down position where he was writing. And he said, let you who have no sin cast the first stone. Amen. And the word that he spoke went into their hearing and went into their conscience and their conscience convicted them. Christ didn't judge them. Christ didn't convict them. They convicted themselves. And what God is asking you today is, why rebel against the word of truth if you're convicted? Why don't you just change? And so all of them were convicted and they dropped their stones and they just all walked away. And the woman stood there with Christ. The son of the most high God. And he said, where are your accusers? I'm getting to a point here. It's a mighty good story, but I'm getting to a point here. 
He said, where are your accusers? And she said, I have none. They've gone away. I'm paraphrasing. And Jesus Christ said, I don't accuse you either. He told the woman, go and sin no more. For all of you who have a notion that you, this is the way God made me. God wants you to know he may have made you and you were shapen in iniquity, but he had a work that came and resolved all of that. And just like he told and he had an expectation of the woman that she would not sin anymore. Just because you believe in Christ and have prayer, and if you are walking in the light, you are covered by the blood of Jesus, those are not solutions for your premeditated That's right. sin. That's right. Those are not solutions for you giving over to your desirous passion. God has an expectation that we all do better. That's right. He is saying, beware of the dark paths and the temptations. Go and sin no more. 